I never needed to know a Talib Kweli thought about anything other than a song with Mary J. Blige. Dog, I used to think you know what Talib I'm was a genius. I thought he made me a genius. Yeah. I was like, I'm <laughs> so smart, I listened to most death. <laughs> <laughs> Any rapper that Dave Chappelle allotted, I Dude, think is in that genre, right? I used to think Common was a genius. I thought Common was a genius. Oh, you were a teacher and from Chicago. Come I know on, you bro. were listening to Common. No, and now he's doing fucking commercials for Microsoft. And you're like, this nigga's an idiot. And I don't even know if the <laughs> old stuff was smart. It is, no. important that we, it is important that we communicate. I don't know what it means <laughs> to tune the fate of this union to the right pitch. Yeah, no, he's just saying stuff. He's Man. just saying stuff. The government growing babies. Microchips in your anus. All koala bears are racist. The ozone layer owes me money. Martians invented turkey stuff. Y'all can't tell me nothing. Well! Well, it's the big show. There it is. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another phenomenal episode of My Mama Told Me. The podcast where we dive deep into the pockets of black conspiracy theories. And we finally work to prove that Joe Budden is a prime example of what happens when your beard connects too much. There is a rule. <laughs> It has to look at least like there are a few patches in there, but that motherfucker connects too much and it's getting to his brain. I'm Langston Kerman. I'm David Borey and I am blown away. Yeah. That's amazing. I never even, it's like the problems you never even think about. You know yeah, you don't want that much connection, man. It's, you're, it's so connected that like, how could anything else go right? Yeah, it's, it's like, no, it's, this is too full. Because, I mean, we could argue that's one of the better beards around. But it ain't, you know what I mean? Like, it, it is in a technical sense. It is a perfectly full beard. But then you look at it and you're like, I don't want that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want what he has. It's, I th okay, here's a couple things about Joe Budden's beard, I think, first of all. Yeah, let's get into it Joe Budden's beard. higher. Very high. The most black men's beard, like. Then his shit's like a two inches away from his eyebrows. Yeah, if he winks, it moves. <laughs> yeah, he looks like a woolly willy. <laughs> and you also, don't want your beard that tall. That's a tall T of a beard. And it's also so manicured that I feel like I have to watch my words here mm. I, as I come to steeple. Okay. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> It's so well put together. And this is by the grace of God. His, his genetics, are, his beard genetics are so strong that I feel like it makes him look foreign in a oh, way that's... Oh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Listen, say no more. <laughs> say no more. <laughs> I 100% agree. <laughs> Joe Button looks like an immigrant. <laughs> From beard alone. <laughs> and I don't know, I'm not here to place what that immigrant is. Uh, no, I'm no, no. certain I'm certainly not taking a stance on whether or not that person belongs in this country. I am in fact welcoming that individual to this country. That is not the stance I think we're taking. Not All enough. we are saying is that Joe Button very much looks like an immigrant to the United States because of his beard. He looks like a cartoon character of an yep. untrustworthy man. Is <laughs> he looks like when when you get attacked by a person, this is who you tell the police to draw from memory so that you yeah. can find that individual. You know what it is? It's Uncanny Valley, mm -hmm, where mm -hmm, the beard mm -hmm. looks so good that you don't trust it. That's yeah. what it is. It's a Polar Express beard, for it's sure. Yeah. It's The lines are so sharp that Something. you just, you're like, this can't, 
That's I don't know what human. I'm looking at, but it's yeah. not right. That's not that's not how people are. Yeah, it's like because, and the weird thing is, it's almost got like a fat Joe quality to his beard, mm-hmm. but it's it's like that's the beard that Fat Joe wants. That that's the thing is that I do think that Fat Joe really worked hard for the beard that he has, and while I don't care for it, I recognize that like no, this was a concerted effort to create. This he's putting Beijing in it. He's really he earned like, it. He he's earned that really beard. trying to make that shit look a certain way. 100%. Whereas I think Joe Budden is cursed with <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> whatever he has. <laughs> he that woman put that spell on him. That yeah, yeah, foreign, yeah. <laughs> that foreign woman that he wronged. <laughs> <laughs> Which isn't a far fetched uh, no, possibility. Exactly what happened? You, oh, you don't think it was some Haitian girl he dated when he was? 16? Yeah, the idea that that Joe Button hasn't done dirt in the Dominican feels <laughs> crazy. <laughs> oh, I bet you there's some illegitimate buttons running around the islands. Uh, <laughs> Boudins. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Just some little Dominican boy who can rap very well. <laughs> because and for I some was... reason chooses not to. Go back to rapping, man. He, we were talking about this off air because the Joe Budden conversations never stop. I'm a big joke. That guy can rap his ass off. He can rap his ass off. I don't appreciate any of his thoughts outside of hip hop, but I, I genuinely am a big fan of uh, the music he used to make. Same. Mood music one through four. We, You know what? Joe Budden came to me at a time I needed a sad rapper. Mm. I needed mm-hmm. a sad rapper. I needed a rapper with some issues. That yeah. also you were like, this guy is sad and depression and he has addiction issues. You know yeah. I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, of course. That's like that Venn diagram was not. I feel like he invented that lane. I, I genuinely miss a point, the point where we didn't have to hear the opinions outside of the rapper's raps. You know what I mean? Where we just got the raps and we didn't know anything about them otherwise. Yes. And, and that, ooh, what a satisfying thing that we used to have. Especially because I think that you and I are probably in the same vein where, you remember that you when you had rappers that you listened to to make people think you were smart? Mm-hmm, of course. Those are the guys that we needed to hear less from. And this is all when I was a teenager. And I, I've since grown up to understand I am not that smart. No. But there was a whole genre of rappers who made you feel smart. And those guys being exposed is maybe not the smartest guys. Re- and then and then you get old and you're like, wow, 50 Cent's really smart? Yeah, it's heartbreaking <laughs> who you find out is actually like. <laughs> turns out, turns out Plies is a pretty thoughtful guy. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in 05, I was like, bust it, baby. I'm going to listen to the Get My Remix. <laughs> and it turns out Plies is like a fucking brilliant dude. Meanwhile, Lupe has some work to do. You know what I mean? Like, it's fucking crazy. I thought Lupe could truly run for Congress at some point. Fuck, man. It, it is. It's a, it's a tragic thing that, that happened, but maybe a necessary thing. Maybe that is... Part of growing up is you realize your heroes are fallible the same way everybody else is. I guess. I think that the, it means that there is a dearth and we can sneak in and get some of this fake smart black money. I like that. Yeah, you know I will. I mean? uh, speaking to that, we had that beautiful uh, Vulture article uh-huh. that was written about us where the, the author uh, was very generous in his explanation and breakdown of sort of the brilliant work that we're doing. Oh, we the want- brilliant work that you're doing. I felt like, <laughs> and he was like, and David Borey, if Langston doesn't have well thought out, developed research, <laughs> David comes in with his trusty sound pad. <laughs> Bing bong, Darky presses a button. <laughs> <laughs> And I know, I understand, I understand the place I occupy. I'm wearing a booty call t-shirt right now. Yeah, That's not that was the point. gorgeous. What a I think gorgeous it's really, piece. Uh, yeah. It's so funny. Oh, man, it looks good, good, man. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, that to say, if we're going to be a, char- if you're going to be a charlatan, I think I would rather be a charlatan who's pretending I'm smart as opposed to like, I'm not going to pretend I kill people or some shit. 
Yeah, you know no, I, mean? I, I want to re- reassure our audience that that no matter what comes out about us, no matter what you start to believe, let me reassure you, we are idiots. Yeah, we are absolute fucking dum dums. And and even if there are parts of you that start to believe otherwise, you're wrong, and you need to reflect on that. Yeah, I mean, it's like. Because if you really pay attention, we've been leading a breadcrumb trail the whole time. <laughs> it's like, it like the end of Usual Suspects where he starts walking straight and you, you realize that he is actually a smart man. Yeah. That's the opposite. What's yeah, going to happen worry. with me and like Steve. <laughs> don't worry. The limp stays. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that being said write more articles about us it was a very nice article it, it was, was a lovely me. article and we would love more of them and uh and make sure you you call call us both brilliant next time or at least yeah. acknowledge my man does more than just press uh bing bong on the back no i mean no they were they were nice to me that's just how i interpret it because i'm a sensitive bitch sure yeah no i i get that yeah yeah, yeah. we have an email that we wanted to to read today. We got a, a very fun email. Yeah, this is an exciting one. From a person named Corey, a proud little mama he, uh, they identify as. I want to assume it's a, a he, but I don't know for sure. But maybe it's a, a she, maybe it's a they. Is Corey a girl's name? It can be either one. Oh, I never met a girl Corey. I don't think. You never met a girl Corey? I feel like I knew a girl named Cora. Oh, sure. From the real world. No, that's not what no, I was Coral. thinking. No, Coral. That was her name. Coral. Yeah. Maybe I'm thinking of Coral. Mm. What was that little girl? No, that was Troy from Crooklyn. Yeah, Troy, Troy was Troy the name. boy. Yeah. Man, that movie was sad, huh? Yeah, I just watched it. I'm a little embarrassed to admit it, but I just watched it for the first time like a week ago. Really? I had seen snippets. I had seen clips and shit, but I never actually. to talk actually... about it like parties and whatnot. Yeah, I, I could keep up. Like, I knew what the basis of the film was, but I never sat and watched the entire movie. And it starts off and you're like, man, this might be Spike Lee's just most uplifting, sweet film about just a, a family with some odd characters. And yeah. then it gets sad and sadder and then uncomfortable and then saddest. But good movie. I love Alfre Woodard and yeah, Delroy Lindo. Delroy and, Lindo, baby. I don't, man, he's a, I don't think we talk about how good that guy is. When did he miss? Never. When's he ever missed? Worst, worst name in the game and truly uh, you think that's a phenomenal. Bad name? It's, it's hard to remember. I love saying it, but it ain't, it ain't an easy <laughs> one when you want to recall your favorite actor. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I think, man, if I was named Delroy Lindo, this would be. Actually, this would be all different. You think the podcast would be thriving? If my name was Delroy Lindo, I would be a Talib Kweli style rapper. Ah, uh, you think we wouldn't even be podcasting? You think this would just be a different wave? You think Delroy Lindo has a podcast? I pray to God he does not. Yeah, of course not. He doesn't need it. His name is Delroy Lindo. <laughs> He seems like he goes to bed in long shirts. Does that make yeah. sense? <laughs> <laughs> ah, 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 ah. He feels like he seems like he wears every fabric except denim. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Does that like? I think that yeah. he hasn't had a pair of jeans since the sixties. And and why would he? That's why that's not, would he? You can't even buy that when your name is Delroy. Here's some shit that's about to fuck you up. Uh-oh. I just I looked him up. Yeah. Born in London. Delroy Lindo is British? Not even ours. He moved here when he was 16. Delroy Lindo? Whoa, I thought he was the blackest man on earth. You could be black from London. Not according to me. (laughs) (laughs) It, It almost makes more sense if you think about it in a British accent. Like, think about this. I was hanging with my mate Delroy, right? Yeah, no, it feels, yeah, oh, fuck. He really is British. Yeah. Whoa, I wonder. God it makes damn sense because they're, they're, they're better at acting than us, so it kind of does make sense. Delroy Lindo, my man. Fuck. But 
the son of Jamaican parents, which I think we all could have guessed as well. Yeah, no, we knew there was uh, Caribbean blood flowing through there. Yeah, yes. he's <laughs> the man has been wearing mesh tank tops for <laughs> for forty years. I think we knew that was the Caribbean. He drinks out of a fruit. For he he's drank out of a fruit, <laughs> but not in the like touristy way. Just no. in the way where it was hot out, and he cracked open a fruit and yeah. got the juices. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we go at Caribbean people ha- hard on this podcast sometimes. I want people to know I want to live in the Caribbean. I think it's great. I yeah, I'm I'm a fan. I when I lived in Boston, I had some nasty run-ins with Haitians, but otherwise I'm a pretty big <laughs> fan of Caribbeans. I, I would say what happened? I just think they're the dominant community out there and and they move the way they move and I move like a nigga from Chicago and and that don't always uh that's complicated. Yeah, you don't always get along when when you are of two different worlds in that way. Man, I know this shit was real because you did not answer my question at all, really. <laughs> like, the way you answered was like, there's specifics that you really don't want to get into. That was crazy. <laughs> Like, bro, when, when you start blaming your city, that's when it's like, you know what I mean? When Listen, like, we all come just... from different places, and uh, <laughs> community is important. Uh, Listen, if you got beat up by some Haitians, you could say it. No, I didn't get beat up by any Haitians, but I, I didn't care for their personalities uh, more often than not when I was oh. in Boston. But otherwise, I'm a big fan of Caribbeans across the board. Yeah, I appreciate island culture. We need to get to Corey's email. Yeah, let's get to the email. Sorry. Uh, Corey sent an email and the subject line, this is a very exciting subject line. It says, tickling a baby equals stuttering adult? Question mark. Love Already, I'm hooked. You're hooked. <laughs> they said, hey, guys, relatively new listener, but this has quickly become one of my favorite podcasts. Your episode timing is perfect as I have a long ass commute on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Fuck yeah. yeah I don't know perfect. where you're going, Corey. And frankly, I think you need to chill the fuck out doing it every week. But that's exciting. I'm glad that we're yeah. we're hitting when we are supposed to hit for you. Had we glad we can support your commute to both your families. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they don't find out via yeah. this podcast. <laughs> but we know what you're up to, Corey. And you got to stop, man. You got to pick one family and abandon the other kids. It just is the right thing to do. Yeah, give the other kids something to overcome, you know? Yep. Go ahead. Make yourself a LeBron James and then uh, raise a Taj Maori in the other house. He said, to the conspiracy, I have a son that, oh, oh, I have a son that was about <laughs> six months old at the time of this event. I went to dinner with my mom and my son was basically inconsolable during the dinner. He wanted me, he wanted to be near his dad. And anytime my mom tried to told him, he would scream. I told my mom that he was very ticklish. Maybe try to tickle him under his armpits to lower his guard. She adamantly refused and said something to the extent of, no, you don't tickle babies or else they'll develop a stutter. Then she proceeds to impersonate someone saying, Daddy, (laughs) with a heavy stutter, I'll spare you the phonetics. (laughs) No, I want the phonetics! (laughs) Hey, yo. That's crazy. (laughs) She did an act out after saying some wild shit at the dinner table. There's a red lobster and she's like... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the waiter just standing there <laughs> confused <laughs> cause a stuttering impression can easily sound like another type of impression right no it it, it, it gets ugly fast if you yeah, don't if people don't know what you're doing <laughs> He goes on to say, have y'all heard anything like this before? I was hysterically laughing because my mom always comes out of left field with new crazy shit. Sincerely, uh, uh, thanks for the laughs, Corey, proud little mom. Man, I mean, I was, let's say, first of all, Corey, your mother, hilarious. Your mother might be uh, primed for being a guest on this podcast. Hall of Famer. <laughs> unbelievably funny shit. Yeah, that's shit out there with Jay Sean. That's the funniest <laughs> shit to do ever. Oh, my God. 
Uh, if, uh, if if your mother is still with us, and I pray that she is, please let her know we are big fans of the work that she's doing. Love what she's got going on. Man, that's uh, so many levels. That's hilarious. I've never heard this before in my life. So here's the first thing. I think that on an animalistic level, yeah. in my in my like animal caveman stupid brain, mm-hmm. I get the science behind it. Okay. <laughs> Like, you shake it too much, and it's going to stay shook. Yeah. You know sure. what I'm saying? And, like, do you ever remember, like, when you're a kid, being tickled is so visceral that, like, I, like, I, sometimes you you think back as a kid, like, how hard you'd be laughing and shit like that, and it's like, yeah, that could have shook, shook something loose. Yeah. Yeah, I never thought about it in terms of shaking something loose, but that is the part that maybe hits the the most for me is that like it's not about getting tickled so much that you stay tickled as much as it is like something babies are fragile and and sort of like are not fully uh configurated inside all the way. Right. And the idea that you do something so jarring to the physical form that it becomes permanent feels like a, a real thing. Because it's like, also, think about it. There's no other form of affection or anything else that you do to a kid that is that physically intense. Mm, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like very, because, so my two brothers, this is really funny. My two brothers have very, because I'm way older than them, right? I'm like 14, yeah. 15 years older than them. So I knew him when they were babies. My two brothers had very different reactions. My one little brother liked being tickled too much, where I would be like, you have to calm down. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you'd be t- and he'd be going ape shit. I'd be like, you got, this is not good. This is like, I feel like I'm creating some kind of a dependence. This yeah. is, you can't be seeking this feeling in the world. Yeah, you're you know a tickle I mean? fiend, my man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're going to end, end up in a documentary someday. Yeah, you got to like, stop. You got, you're having too good a time. And then my other little brother really disliked it. Yeah. Like, you could tell it was, like, kind of too intense for him. Mm-hmm. Like, you would tickle him, and he would he would be laughing. But he'd be pissed. So yeah. as soon as you'd be done, he'd be like, he'd be like really upset with you, and like I don't like, 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 kind of stop doing it. You know? What I yeah. Mean? My my daughter is closer to that energy where she like will laugh about it, but also like afterwards, it's like, hey, don't do that. That's not because <laughs> it is. That's not cool, and I don't, I don't appreciate it. And I get it because it's very, it, it feel, it's very like a assault, not a so it. it, it it's intense. It's a disarming experience and you can't you can't control your reaction in a way that that feels maybe the most vulnerable that that you can feel in your human experience. You know what I mean? Where sure. like like sure. I uh, something is being forced out of me that I truly was not aiming for, don't like. It it's too much. Yeah, and it's like this type of thing where it's like if the reaction to tickling wasn't laughing, it would we would think it was torture. It's weeping. It, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If it was if you're crying, if if tickling elicited the response of crying, doing that to someone would be the worst thing you could possibly do. Which I do think and maybe this is may uh me conflating television with real life, but is wasn't tickle torture a real thing? Wasn't that at some point uh that people did? I'm going to look it up. Tickle when I torture. think about it in my head, it also makes me think it was an episode of a cartoon or something. Yeah. Like they had somebody tied up and they put like a feather to their feet. But I would tell. If you tickle me too much, I don't like being tickled now. My girls just found out on the bottom of my feet and I had to be like, listen, like you, you can't just like walk by and like, you know what I'm saying? Okay, they're saying that tickle torture is a uh, is more of a TV trope than a real thing. Uh, Although, hey, no shame, that happens to me all the time. Yeah, no. Again, remind y'all, fucking idiot. But this website uh, called uh, DanPetrosini.com 
uh, claims that uh, in ancient China, tickle torture was used as a way to punish the noble class. It was preferred over other types of discipline because it left no marks and the victims would recover fairly quickly. Is also used as a torture tool in ancient Japan, where it was called uh, merciless tickling. My favorite historical reference depicted above has the Romans t- t- tying a prisoner down and then coating the bottom of their feet with salt water. They would then bring out a goat who would lick the salt off, igniting uncontrollable laughter. I hate that. I hate, I hate that the goat is involved. Yeah, that makes it worse somehow. Uh, uh, now, I will say that, that this article does not have uh, any references or any real, uh, I, I guess, proof of the claim. So I worry that it is just a person writing slightly racist things about the past. You know what I mean? Where you're just like, I bet the ancient Chinese did that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, ancient Chinese secret. Yeah, exactly. I So the Wikipedia also says that there's an article in the British Medical Journal that describes the goat the goat licking, but it remains unclear if this method was ever used in practice as it is only described in the 1502 Tracatus de Indices, mm. El Tortura by you the Italian... You yeah, nailed you know, that. I got it. You know, I got it. <laughs> by the Italian jurist and monk Franciscus Brunus de San Severino, mm. a treatise that actually cautioned against the torture in general. And while it seems clear that he had not made up this practice, the issue is left open whether the inclusion is based on hearsay. Right. Yeah, I I worry that some of this is just rooted in hearsay. This article also claims that there's documented evidence that Nazi guards tickled inmates in concentration camps in order to torture them. And that feels like a lie. That, That I think that is a lie. There's no fucking way in the world... (laughs) That in between gassing people to death and shooting them in the head, they also were tickling these motherfuckers. They were, yeah, I think we have a lot of documentary on what they did, and it's all atrocious. I don't think they were also like, yeah, tickle them, too. Yeah, I don't think they wanted the Jewish people to have any fun. Yeah, Even, even yeah, if it yeah. was fun against their will, they were like, you're not fucking going to get tickled. Yeah, that's like not, I think it kind of does a disservice to the legacy of what happened there. Yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> 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 so maybe we don't trust everything that they're saying, but it does sound like at least the the tropes on television were rooted in some version of historical f- uh, near fiction that like maybe there were theories on tickle torture that that at some point were tried or or at the very least considered by people. Right. And I think I mean back to the base back to the root of the all this. I I'm constantly of the fear that I'm going to do too, something too much and get it stuck. Mm. So this plays right into my, I believe this one. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't believe, maybe I don't believe, because I, yeah, because like my one brother that we tickled, he's fine. He's a singer now. He's doing great. Yeah. But like a lot, a lot of billowy clothing, but that's, that's for our family to figure out. You know what I mean? <laughs> Here's cancer. what I'll say. I don't know that I believe that just tickling will lead to a stutter, but I do believe and I, I'm going to go out on a limb here. Let's go crazy. I do believe that every single person with a stutter was maybe tickled too hard at some point. Okay. I don't okay. believe that tickling leads to stutters, but I do believe there is a Venn diagram of motherfuckers getting tickled too hard and now a stutter exists. And but- so I, I, don't, I, I don't know that we have the runway to be able to create causality, right? Like to say this is definitively the, the cause, but I will say that I bet they've all experienced a similar thing at some point. To push back on that a little bit, yep. who hasn't been tickled real hard? I don't know. I don't, I think everybody's at least, I mean, you have to come from a pretty cold upbringing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think Donald Trump's been tickled at all. I think he was tickled as a baby. You have. You to think be, Donald Trump was tickled at some point? So I think a housekeeper. I think the Jamaican. <laughs> I think the Jamaican woman who raised him. Yeah, I think she tickled him sometimes. I don't think anybody's ever tickled that man once, and I think, I think that's how been, he got here. I don't think you can come out of childhood without getting tickled. I really don't. It's one of the easiest games to play with a child. 
it's one of the easiest games to play with a child you have any affection for. And right. I think that that there are some people who find themselves in childhoods that uh, are completely loose of affection. That I like, think so. But even then, they never had a friend's parent. They never had one, somebody to like to a say, local pervert. Uh... Don't do that. I knew you were going to do that. I knew you were going to do that. And I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair right now. Because, listen, we all a lot of us maybe didn't get the affection that was maybe re- needed mm. as a child. And we run, run to things like the entertainment field to fill that <laughs> void. But <laughs> even within that, we've all been still been tickled. Sure. I mean, yeah, no, like, I've been tickled quite a bit. Yeah, kids get tickled. Kids get tickled. It just happens. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, also, if you don't know kids or something, it's like a really easy go to. What am I going to ask you? How's the wife and kids? How's school going? No, I'm going to tickle you and then I'll be out. And yeah, you like, let me get under them armpits. Or yeah, could you, could you get, and then I'm out. <laughs> Go go somewhere. Hey, you go take care of yourself. Yeah, all right. Here's a cig. (laughs) Here's a tickle and a cigarette. (laughs) (laughs) The point is, I do think tickling is such a... I think it's a pretty... Because I... And now now maybe I'm overstepping, but I think it is like crosses even cultures. Mm. I feel like the whole world is tickling. Mm. Right, like there's no there's no country where they don't tickle children. I'd imagine. I don't think so, but maybe that's our our own ignorance, right? Like I I truly don't know. Well, because I think that also in a this is weird. I think in America we're a lot softer on babies than other places are. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, like in Sierra Leone, they're hard on babies, bro. I just shake a little baby. Even think it's funny. I I'll say this: I remember my auntie like picking up my cousin by his leg, like ah, it's funny. I but I also think that in other places, while yes, they can be quote unquote hard on babies, there also is like a more of an intimacy created between parents and their kids than sometimes in the United States. Like really, my friend, my friend was telling me that there's this practice. That happens in in a lot of international Asian households where when a child is born, the mother will spend like three months in the bed with the child that like they will just be in the bed all day long, nursing, spending time, cuddling, because it's both a chance for the mother to recover, but also to sort of build like an intimacy, a comfort with this child. And I think because of that, you really become fucking locked in as a unit. And that child is like nurtured, cared for in a way that like in a fucking America, you got to be back to work in two weeks. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. That luxury doesn't exist. So while we are quote unquote presenting easier on our children, we are not necessarily giving them the things that like other children are probably reaping. God damn, ain't that America in a nutshell? Fuck. Yeah. Fuck. That fucked me up. I no, it's, never... it's disappointing <laughs> when you find out that, like, oh, we we truly are just doing things wrong in some ways. Right. Because, I mean, it, our babies take a long time to take care of. Yeah. Did you read that? You ever read that book, Sapiens, that you have a torn no. guy? It goes back to this idea of, like, standing up. We weren't maybe ever supposed to be standing up. And because of it, our babies come out underdeveloped. Because it takes longer to take care of our babies than, like, any other animal. Yeah, right. It takes us way longer to become full grown than every other type of animal. And, and giraffes develop. start out doing it all. That motherfuckers come out tall and ready. Come Just on. Flop to the ground and get to work. Yeah, man. These so, giraffes are so fun. I got in a giraffe fight the other day. This, this is weird, actually. I don't want to talk about it. What? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you got in a giraffe fight? Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Me? Oh, man. Can I guess what I think it is? Yeah. Okay. 
I what I know about how giraffes fight is they slam their necks into each other. Am I to believe that you and another person were slamming your your heads and necks into each other? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so embarrassed? It's like weird now. That <laughs> no, I'm, it's th- definitely weird. After I like said it, I, it's like because it, uh, me, uh, me and my girl were in the kitchen and we accidentally bumped heads, and then she she's like, "Let's fight like giraffes." <laughs> it's only like a little bit. <laughs> Damn man, you're in love. That's beautiful. That's really nice. There's something's going on. You just uh, out here, <laughs> you just out here being weird with a lady because she asked. That's yeah, that's yeah. what love is. Big well, girl. I'm weird too, though. So it's like I was like, yeah, okay. yeah. I've never been in a giraffe fight. I'm not gonna miss out on an yeah, opportunity. To giraffe it turns fight. out, if you have a regular neck, it's real. It's hard to get the angles. Yeah, I was about to say. It seems like you probably are hitting chins and skulls pretty. It's often. It's just you can't like because you try to like elongate and then go in. But yeah. it's like it's just we don't have we're not built for it. We're not built like that. Thank God she doesn't listen to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta tell her to listen. We need the numbers. Come on. All right, yeah, let's go. <laughs> That's true. We need the boost. <laughs> let's let's take ego out of this and get this lady <laughs> at least downloading once a week. <laughs> I looked up online what causes stuttering. The Stuttering okay. Foundation, stutteringhelp.org, says there are four factors most likely to contribute to the development of stuttering genetics. Approximately 60% of those who stutter have a family member who does also. Child development, children with other speech and language problems or developmental delays are more likely to stutter. Neurophysiology, recent neurological research has shown that people who stutter process speech and language slightly differently than those who do not stutter in family dynamics. High expectations and fast-paced lifestyles can contribute to stuttering. Stuttering may occur when a combination of factors comes together and may have different causes in different people. It is a probable, it is probable that what causes stuttering differs from what makes it continue or get worse. No Damn. mention of tickling, but certainly elements inside of this that feel like they uh they they at least are speaking to the possibility of familial influence and physical i guess eh, nothing physical but certain sociological influence in your home i mean that in and of itself is scary that you can put a lifestyle on a child that will develop a st- like is it like a stress thing like like mm. high expectations and fat like you, the kids under so much stress it's just like even talking becomes difficult. Yeah, it sounds like, I mean, obviously you can't downplay the sort of importance of family and neurological development being like the, the probably the biggest players inside of this. Right. But I imagine that like the stress of a fast paced household or things not necessarily being as, I guess, you know, helpful in in the net needs and resolves of that one individual because i don't want to put it on some shit where it's like oh your house is fucked up and that's why you stutter i don't think that's what they're saying i think they're more saying that like we all individually have specific needs based on our own brains and like house and sometimes that need doesn't match what you have and that might lead to a little bit of a stutter Okay, that's good because I'm glad it's not physical because there's time. I was worried you were going to say you could scare it into somebody. Ooga <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> You ever scare a kid a little too much? And you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, have you ever done that? Like where you scared a kid and it was like they got too scared? You know what? I, I was so much a kid who did not like being scared. How you're talking about how your little brother not liking being tickled. Yeah. That's how I felt about like motherfuckers hiding around corners and being spooky and shit. Yeah. That I have chosen not to ever do that to my kid. Like, Interesting. I, I, well, a tale of two brothers again, 
both also had the same reactions to being scared. Oh, one of them really liked it, and the other one. Yeah, the tick, obviously the tickle one, the fiend, who, as an adult, is not an adult, he's 16, but is like the more calm one yeah, of yeah, all of yeah. us now. He's the calmest one. Well, but he also he, loved to he be scared. He survived trauma. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but he likes He's like, like I grew up in a haunted house, so I <laughs> yeah. think I'll be okay. <laughs> he would like because when you would scare him, like if you do the boo thing, he would get scared and then he would laugh really, really hard. Yeah. Whereas Martin, the one you met, he did. He he also he was very like he was kind of one of those kids where he which to his credit and, and he carried it on to, to adulthood. Thank God, but he was very quick to be like, I don't like that. I I think about um. You you watch Ellen, right? In like uh back No. When, well, I didn't mean literally, I just meant uh oh. <laughs> in the, the the you in the royal sense. Okay. <laughs> I didn't presume that you were spending your mornings watching that white lady dance in sneakers. I didn't think you did either. That's why I was kind of offended when you brought it up. No, no, no. I I don't I do not watch Ellen, although uh you know, I thought she was a pretty good lady until I found out she wasn't. And I don't who, mind who daytime is? talk though. I will say it's like kind of fun to watch like the real or something. I I like when it feels like you're actually having a, a conversation with that person, I get more bored when it feels like, oh, these are just canned bits during the day. Cause then it's like, well, if that's, if I'm watching that, then I might as well wait till late night where they'll tell the, the naughty version of this story. That's a good you know point. what I mean? That's fair. You don't like watching my man, Michael Strahan? No. I've never cared for him having a talk show once. I actually think it's pretty offensive that this man with brain damage gets to be don't come on michael strahan he is just a charming guy i don't i don't like it i truly don't like when sports this might be because you don't like football though it might be but i really don't like when sports guys suddenly become like uh sort of like media guys it fucking bugs me and i don't know why really but it, I, it don't sit right in my spirit when they like suddenly become cute and are hanging. Is it because with... deep down you just think they're big gorillas paid to smash each other? Because <laughs> that's how it sounds the way you're talking. That's like me reading between the lines. And this is, I love Michael Strahan. I've always thought he was charming. I lo- I loved him when he played football. Like, uh-huh. oh my god, when he was on the Giants, he was so much fun. And then he had that commercial, big old Michael Strahan. Oh man. <laughs> Love that guy. I, I want I want to defend myself, but I guess a little part of me is like, yeah, I don't think these big old animals should uh be talking to fucking Sydney Sweeney. Yes. I can I can feel I, it I feel it emanating from you. I, I I just like when people stay in the lane that they are strongest in and it bug it bugs me when people find themselves in a lane that I know is not where they're supposed to be. You know you what I mean? That like I get it. Michael Strahan is a charming guy. He's handsome. He's he's fine, but he's also like a a galoot with a lisp. And I I is feel he though? Like... I feel like you're playing. A, <laughs> it's like it's like some guys they make it great. Like Shaq, great media personality. Shaq is a great media personality next to four got three other guys who know how to talk. But Shaq ain't supposed to be talking to regular people that's an insane take <laughs> he's not a dog he's not, his voice is just deep he's not slow yes he is david All right, bro this is not this is not Dude. what i thought we were gonna split you think listen. Shaq is a stupid person you think shaquille rashawn o'neal <laughs> I, I listen, I don't I don't mean to stretch this into smart and not smart. That's not the point that I'm trying to make. I think you're extending it there. I am saying that Shaq next to Kenny, Ernie and Charles is phenomenal. But whenever they put Shaq next to other people, you start to really tell that this motherfucker ain't connecting dots the way he's supposed to connect dots. There are those episodes where it's like him and Candace Parker and Candace Parker is exhausted by the end of that shit because he is a hard man to talk to and he ain't throwing up no lobs to nobody. That's what I'm saying is that under the right circumstances, I'll listen to Shaq talk all day, but I'm not going to sit here and pretend that this is like a, a late night talk show host. I mean, okay, he's no Arsenio Hall. No. 
That's fair. <laughs> He's not even Devonte Hall, who Come I don't on. even know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> I assume Arsenio's a uh, slow cousin. I, he's none of those people. I, I like the big fella. I like Michael Strahan. I, I, my point, before we got into this yeah. ugly tangent, my yeah, point this got dark, was to say that... Because I don't that, think you'd be saying that if he was large skin. <laughs> I'd shut the fuck up. Yeah. I, that's, I, I just, Shaq, you're... Shaq, you're a wonderful speaker, and both your eyes are looking in the same direction. Yeah, because how do you feel about Kareem <laughs> Abdul-Jabbar? I don't like that shit either. What the fuck are oh, you doing really? in the Veronica, Veronica Mars room? That Did don't you, make no goddamn you're sense. You're talking like funny. you lost a job. He's a very smart man. He's Kareem. not funny. Why is he writing in comedy rooms? Is, is Veronica Mars a comedy? I've never watched it. I never watched it. I have never watched it. He's never made us laugh once. I thought it was pretty funny when he was doing that karate. <laughs> my point <laughs> if I can get to my point yeah okay go ahead my point was that on Ellen they used to do that thing where they would scare the shit out of their guests every once in a while somebody would be sitting there and then like a producer or a scary person would pop out from a box of the back whatever and you always see sort of these telling moments inside of the celebrities of like the people who laugh it off genuinely and the people who are laughing because if they don't, they're worried they're going to lose their career, but like are truly angry about right. what just happened to them. And I think I fall much closer to the, I would be truly angry and, and not in a way that I could like just keep chit chatting about I could, that's my right. life. You know what I mean? I could, I, I do see that and I would respect that in you like I wouldn't nothing about you makes me think you would like want to be scared no I don't like that yeah I could tell I, I feel like it would take you out of your frame I feel like it would make you vulnerable in a way that I don't think you would appreciate no I, I've, I've worked really hard to present a certain person <laughs> to the world uh, <laughs> and you, just you could make one noise and that shit would go crumble yeah <laughs> And I'll be honest, I do be making weird noises. Like I cried, I cried so hard at our wedding, at like our wedding. And one of those cries were like, uh, while I was trying to say my vows, like a, oh, no. a sound came out. And then I had to apologize to the, uh, to like the entire, oh. I had to be like, I'm sorry, y'all. I don't know what that was. Man. And, you know what I, I mean? Like, I, I think it's crazy that you even told that story. I wouldn't have told nobody. <laughs> Well, you're my friend. I'm being vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. Yeah, back <laughs> off. Uh, <laughs> no, do you, do you cry weird? Are you a weird crier? I think so. I think it's because I try not to be crying too hard. And, right. And it always makes that coyote yelp happen. That's that, the See, that's the thing about crying is you kind of just got to let it pass through. Like, because if you hold on to not crying, that shit, then it's, that's when it sounds goofy. You got to yeah. just... Take the two, three big sobs and then get through it. Yeah, take a deep breath, let it out, and and then uh, and then be past it. And yeah, I, I yeah. Like, when you uh, 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 in the side, you're fuck. holding on, you're yeah. holding on. No, I'm telling you, because I I probably I probably hit a cry once every three years, four years, something like that. Yeah. So it's like I I, I know how to go through it, and it's also like just gotta make sure nobody's around, man. Get in the shower, turn the water on. Mm. You know what I mean? Blast You're hiding them tears. Yeah, blast that Mary J. Blige, not gonna cry, and just feel what you gotta feel. Damn. Yeah, I'm not there yet, but I, I'll work on it. I, oh, I'm man. I'm a man uh, in in constant change, in constant growth, and and I will grow beyond where I am, and maybe I'll grow to learn and understand Shaq to be the the brilliant uh, thinker that you see him as. That's not what I'm. I'm just you would like him. I think. I don't think so. I think he's, like if we hung out with the big fella, you don't think you'd have a good time? No, I think he's probably a bully in real life. Do you not like it because he would be so much larger than you? No, I genuinely think he takes uh, a, a type of pride in being so much larger than people that like he's the type of dude that'll like bump you intentionally and like sort of shake you a little bit. And I don't like that. I could see him like picking you up. 
Yeah, not in a way that's that like, oh, be, we're both I, having fun type shit. It's like, no, I want you to feel like, look, I could pick you up. Yeah, look, you're you're a small, weak man to me. Look, yeah, and it's look, like, <laughs> Diesel got you in a headlock. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see your little pee pee. Let me see. <laughs> <Bro>. <laughs> he my, yeah, he pulled, pulled my pants down. He's like, look at it. Look at it. That's, that's nothing compared to mine. Look at that. I, I think ultimately we just unlocked what your real fear is. Yeah, I don't want him to pick me up and expose my little pee-pee to the world. Take your pee-pee up. Because <laughs> when you say it, it does, that would be terrible. That, that's the type of guy he is, I think. Look at his little pee-pee. Look at it. Look. Your wife, your wife is there. <laughs> like, this, this is what you like. This is, <laughs> you, you vowed your life to this. Yeah, and it's like hey, she's embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. It's and like, his voice is all low, so it would hurt even more. He'd be like, "Lisa has a tiny penis." <laughs> <laughs> you know, people got their phone out. We're at a yeah. restaurant. Jack. Oh man, yeah. Why he would you do this? He took his shit out of Dan Tanner's. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> It's a good restaurant. Why would you do that? <laughs> it's our anniversary. <laughs> we invited you here. Me, you, my wife, for our anniversary. Oh, uh, man. I mean, that's fair. He I, he does use his size in a way that, and who, who amongst us would not? No, I, I don't blame him. I'm, I'm certainly not better than him. I just don't uh, believe that he would have good good intentions for for me and frankly you if we spent time with him maybe i think i could i think i could get in there and i think that that's that's maybe some of the sickness right is that we all that's find true. ourselves sort of believing in in our heroes in a way that that maybe isn't completely true but and now we, if i'm if i'm being honest with myself maybe i just love him because he was the biggest blackest thing and as a big black thing, I was, you know what I mean? Like, I've always been, I, 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 big nigga heroes, bro. I've always been like big dark guys who are making, I, that's, I, they have a space in my heart. You know what bro, I'm saying? Bro, I get it. There are a bunch of losers who are just light skinned men that, that right. I'm always going to root for right. in a way that everybody else, you know, won't. And I, but, yeah, I can't, you have your kings as well. I'm sure I have my kings, and I yeah. I can't walk away from that. And I'm not going to pretend otherwise, no matter what anybody says about them, because it just I, you made me feel seen in a way that I needed when when no one else could. Right, like there's nothing Ben Wallace could do that would make me turn my back on him. Mm-hmm. I respect that. You know, yeah, yeah, I get it. Same thing for for Austin Rivers for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> you know it's fucked up in my heart of hearts, <laughs> and this is not. And this is my immediate feeling to that. When yeah. you said that, I was like, "Yeah, we are better." <laughs> like in my brain, in my brain, I was like, "This nigga said Austin Rivers." I'm talking about Ben Wallace. <laughs> I was joking. Oh, you okay. can shit on Austin Rivers, but you okay, know yeah, he was yeah, the yeah. funniest name I could think of at the time. Yeah, I mean, you know, he was he's he's a nugget for a while. Uh, yeah. anyways, <laughs> to Corey's that uh, because we, I think we did it. I think this, I think we got it. This I think we got what really we funny. needed. Corey, to your question of whether or not tickling leads to stuttering, I think we would be irresponsible to say anything other than that is not true. Your mother is wrong, but she remains the funniest mom. Yeah. And she deserves the funniest mom award when that comes out. I, I don't know when voting opens up, but she certainly has mine in, in David's vote. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Tell, you, t- t- tell your mom we say hi. Tell your mom we say what's up. Hey, girl. What's up, man? Yeah, tell, tell, <laughs> tell, tell her Langston licked his lips. <laughs> hey, hey, tell her we say hi. Yeah. Corey, Corey. Corey. Tell your, mom, tell your mom when we say hi. Yeah, when your mom comes around, I'm going to be like, where's my hug at? <laughs> Miss Brandy, Miss Brandy, where's my hug at? <laughs> <laughs> I do want it. I do want it known for the record. I I'm not a wear my hug at type dude at, at all. This is just a little bit. 
I Are, no, no, you're not. I'm joking. No, uh, yeah, that doesn't even that doesn't even fit with your whole get down. That's like and, uh, that'd be devastating to find out about a person you you know to be like, oh shit, that's who you are. Because you also seem like a guy who would get the hug naturally, anyways. Because to be aware of my hug at, you have to not. Yeah, you weren't gonna get a hug. You weren't you, gonna get, which means you're already kind of maybe it's a musty situation or yeah. just a. A general off-putting in that women don't want to embrace you. Yeah, exactly. Can you tell the people where they can find you and what cool shit you have going on? Uh, cool guy jokes eighty seven on Instagram. All the stuff is there. I'm not touring too much right now, but back in in like June, July, that's about to start up again. Uh, so in the meantime, just watch Royal Crackers. Uh, come to the show. Come to come to the live. Come to the live show for my birthday. It's gonna be great at the Comedy Store, May fifth. Live. My mama told me. We're trying to sell that bitch out so then we can, in turn, sell more shows out, eventually make them enough money to disappear and have us never have you never see us again because ultimately we do not know you. We don't know you. And, and don't know you. we're going to retire except, in the Caribbean. Except for Miss Brandy. Miss Brandy, we know you. We know you, Miss Brandy. Corey, mama. We know her. Come on. Come on. Uh, Corey, mama, <laughs> fine as a bitch, man. <laughs> <laughs> And funny. She's yeah, funny. Bro, Miss Brandy's so funny, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as always, uh, you can follow me at Langston Kerman. And if you want to send us your own drops, your own conspiracy theories, if you want to tell us exactly where we can find Corey's mom, send it all to mymamapod at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. You can buy the the merch. I, I believe the website changed, so I don't remember what it is. But look it up. You'll find it. Yeah. It's not that deep. And like, subscribe. Do do whatever you're rate supposed to do. iTunes. Oh, yeah, rate, rate on, on iTunes. Rate, rate on iTunes. Do all that stuff so that we we get these numbers uh, popping like they should. We we love all of our listeners and we're grateful for all you new listeners that keep coming in. Um, and that's that's all the stuff that we needed to say. Bye, bitch. <laughs> <laughs>